um, living sustainably. It's a very important topic these days. And um, for me, the first question was always about like, how can I, what can I sacrifice to be better at sustainability? And um, it's almost like sometimes feeling like I should move to a secluded island, walking, swimming there, and part of like grow everything myself. Um, with that in mind, you, I would kind of think, okay, maybe like when I talk about living sustainably, one lipstick at a time, then maybe I should throw away my lipstick one lipstick at a time, which then makes the whole, the whole talk become short, right? <laughs> but okay, like some of you might agree or not, but if you think that throwing away lipstick is easy, it's maybe I, I should remind you that the beauty industry is actually more than just lipstick. It's also shower gel, it's shampoo, it's soap, conditioner, and everything else. So it's not so easy to get rid of them. And if you are like me, who loves beauty, let me tell you that I got your back. <laughs> For me, personally, um, lipstick and beauty is like an artist, right? Like giving out beauty to me would be like asking an artist to give up painting just because someone thinks a paint is unsustainable. And that's me trying to do a hundred day of beauty project where every day I would check out a different look. But that's not just me. I mean, beauty has existed since thousands of years ago. Nefertiti also kind of wear makeup, and lipstick is actually invented in the ancient Mesopotamian. So going more, a bit more forward, there's a story at the Bergen-Belsen liberation camp where they actually got a shipment of lipstick. And the man, of course, uh, thought that was a crazy idea, but then in the end, these lipsticks actually makes the woman feels more human again. They feel like they are themselves and more than just a number tattooed in their arm. So lipstick brings them back humanity. There are also stories of lipstick and makeover give people back the sense of self-love and be feeling like being themselves again. In the, in the US, there's also a few initiatives where they do makeover uh, with uh, homeless people, and this makes them feel confident again. So, you know, in the end, like, beauty is here to stay. There are, there are different things and there are meanings to everyone, like it's personal, it's self-expression, it's love, it's confidence. So what is next to do is then we f need to find a way to make beauty to be more sustainable. Okay, this is one of my favorite lipstick. I mean, I say one off because you'll find out later. And um, let me tell you, I mean, let me quickly tell what's going into it. So there's the raw ingredients, which comes from either mining with like mica and talc. There are the organic ingredients that come from agriculture and the synthetic ingredients that's done in the laboratories like uh, retinol or hyaluronic acid. And then there's the packaging that goes with it. Um, in, this, in this case, it's plastic and metal, and this is actually refillable, so very good, like sustainable. Um, there's manufacturing that's, uh, that would require energy and water. And then there's the other case of get bringing this thing to the customer. So the distribution, which is taking the lipstick to my hand, and how we use the lipstick or 
um, whether, whether, whether we use it means that it brings more damage to the environment or how long are we using it and things like that. And then the end of cycle, how we dispose the finished product. So where in this field can we improve sustainability? As someone who loves to code, I was too easily drawn into thinking how I can solve this by making an app. We all know this problem. Um, or doing like stack, putting artificial intelligence and machine learning into it that we're gonna solve it with tech. I mean, tech is great, but it's just a part of how we could solve this. The beauty companies does stuff, but it's also a part of this. And actually, the biggest part is our behavior change as a customer. If you see the first part of this, like the production part, there's the ingredients, manufacturing, and packaging. Um, the, one of the big pain points in sustainability with lipsticks are actually how they can source the ingredients to uh, the product. Because um, lipsticks or other beauty products have plenty of ingredients, and it is sometimes, it could be difficult to find out where they're coming from. And it makes a lot of difference when an ingredient is got like sustainability, sustainably. For instance, palm oil that is T taken from a sustainable farm versus a result of deforestation, or mica that is obtained um, ethically versus using child labor. So there are these problems that could affect the carbon emission, the, the whole um, sustainability and biodegradability of the product. And so there are initiative and actually code uh, programs that the company could create a better formulation based on the carbon emission of the product. So in this regards, you could see that uh, green companies actually have more push into why we should do this because, hey, they got more growth than the regular companies. And so more initiative from the beauty companies than they do um, better, they do better emission for the factories and they do also try, uh, more, do more research into recyclable packaging and everything else. So it's in a good cause. But um, there's another fact that's kind of interesting that even though we do make 100% sustainability of the product, in the case of shampoo, 20% of it is the product, and 80% is actually how we use it. It is the water that we use when we, when we use shampoo, the heating that comes through the water. So if you're thinking that from now on I'm gonna shower a little less, you're on a good track to change your behavior and make shampoo more sustainable. Now that we talk about usage, um, there's a part of use and end of cycle. It's one thing that we, we have recyclable products, but then do we actually use the product till the end of the cycle? And this is also a very, there's a very crazy number that actually 1,000 1, pound worth of products actually unused in beauty and toiletries. And that is not enough for, for something that you would throw away in the end. And for this kind of purchase decision, um, tech is actually is a good solution for it because tech could excel people in helping them making better beauty 
purchase decision. For instance, with augmented reality, you see some companies are trying to do um, like UCAM, uh, Modi face and looks. You can try on lipsticks on your face and so you can see it on your face for a few times before you buy, which makes it better when you wanna be sure that that's the color for you. There's also other solution like the AI powered recommendation. They can do like skincare recommendation based on what your skin feels like. And what we, when we, what we also do before with Twindly is to find a beauty twin. So finding a similar profile, sim a similar other person with your skin and color type. We could also think of developing a solution to compare beauty products based on their sustainability in the hopes that when someone is choosing a beauty product and they could find other products that is similar to the one they choose but better sustainably. So then it's easier for them to choose for a sustainable product. Sadly though, like 75% of the average beauty users actually don't finish their makeup. So I'm pretty sure like some of you would have a lipstick in your drawer somewhere that you never touch or an eyeshadow that you never wear and it's gone bad. Well, I'm actually glad I'm not alone because I have 104 lipstick at home. <laughs> and uh, yes, that's like 104 lipstick right there. And if I were to finish them all and wear it, and wear everything, it will take me 25 years. So um, unfortunately, that's also not possible because as you know, like lipstick has an expiry date, so I cannot do that. And that's, yes, that's my biggest sin in sustainability, one of, I guess, um, but I know this. And what can I do actually moving forward that I can change my own behavior? I find like for me, Tracking my own beauty behavior is good because then I know which color I like the most. How many colors do I actually have? Like what kind, which one I reach out more and which one I just go from use one from time to time. And if you, when I track them by the end of the month or I will get statistic of like which one I use the most. So if I want to buy a new one or, or not, then I can rely on this. And then um, you could know which, which color you actually like. In this regards, it's almost like I get to reward myself. It's the dopamine effect if you buy something, but in my case, it's in the end of the month when I know I've used something. Um, it's also rewarding when you actually finish something, which is a great different thing than what I had done before. And if you are an extrovert, um, there's also other ways to do it. You can uh, join a movement on Instagram, for instance, there's a lot of movement called like Shop Your Stash, which is actually using beauty items to, from your stash instead of buying new ones, or a group of people is trying to finish what you actually have, like use it up in Project Pan. It's a quirky thing because, you know, if you have a powder product, you have a tin thing on the, on the bottom, and for the most of us, who have a lot, you don't actually get the bottom to it. So this is kind of our encouragement to finish a product. And empty is a very interesting thing because these days people actually like to showcase products that they are finished with and not like getting new stuff, but we actually finish something. And I find that really cool. 
Yes. Yeah, so when you think of all of these changes of behavior, you could you could think like, would this matter? Like, would the beauty industry change? Would would I do something? Would it be different? Actually, there's a number that I find really interesting. It's um, around 2015. The consumer likes to not use paraben. Paraben is an ingredient used to conserve cosmetics. And within two years, there are more products that doesn't use paraben. Even though whether paraben is actually dangerous for you is still debatable. But nevertheless, the consumer chose not to buy paraben, and so the industry responded by getting more product without paraben out. And even um, the sales of cosmetics free from paraben is higher. So yes, this industry actually listens to what we ask. If you want more sustainable thing, they will give it to you. So in the end, like, we simply just do not decide our future. We decide our habits, and our habits decide our future. So let's change our habits for the better future. Thank you.